Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Earlier today, we were reporting uh, this uh, particular article. And by the way, uh, you're looking at film footage filmed by Iran. Uh, RT sharing this information here. Uh, and it does appear that this uh, ship may very well have been struck by a torpedo. And that's what the alleged information is coming out. That caused our video, when we just did it as a question, uh, to be blocked uh, almost immediately on uh, well portable devices like your phone uh, we noticed that they were blocking it for quite some time it was blocked and I think that was to prevent this news from going viral around the world uh, I did check with some of my friends that I know intelligence uh, areas there and I was uh, was finally confirmed with me that it was a torpedo that was that struck these ships here and uh, and at that as well other things are being shared with me and I, one thing I want to bring out out and uh, very very concerning to me and that is that uh, as you can see in the title of the video here that China uh, is sharing technology with uh, Iran uh, that's exactly right China sharing technology with with Iran and this is technology that is beyond US capabilities now, I know that this may sound like a far-fetched even hear something like that but uh, this is from very very uh, well, deep intelligence sources that I have given me this information there that Chinese technology that is far beyond U.S. technology or capabilities is being shared with Iran. Now, with that being said, let me just kind of share some other things with you. Again, we'll kind of recap this. Uh, we had, as you already know, uh, RT had reported the Iran's foreign minister has labeled the report attack on the two Japan-related oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman as suspicious. The attack did occur while uh, the Prime Minister Abe of Japan was meeting with Tehran uh, with their uh, supreme leader, uh, Yavad Zarif, noted the, uh, the incidents on the two vessels on Thursday, one of which had been reportedly struck by a torpedo, had occurred as Abe sat down for extensive and friendly discussions with Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei. So that happened there. Now, to top all that off, we also saw that the Chinese were reporting here uh, U.S. blames Iran for attacks on the oil tankers in the Sea of Oman. Uh, you know, I think that's kind of ludicrous. You know, if the Iranians are wanting to be able to get uh, uh, their oil trade continuing on and they're meeting with the Japanese prime minister, I think the last thing Iran wants to do is to sabotage their oil deal. But anyway, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said on Thursday that Iran is responsible for the attacks on the two oil tankers in the Sea of Oman without providing hard evidence, while Tehran called the incident suspicious. <clears throat> All you got to do is put the blame out there somewhere and pretty much, uh, well, you've already created that, that suspicion of doubt. That's exactly sometimes what happens to us as well as a news agency. All they got to do is put it out there and then it puts, plants it in the people's mind. They got the doubt there. Well, you've got to be the one to overcome the doubt. That's exactly what Pompeo is doing, putting the suspicion on Iran. When anybody with any common sense whatsoever knows good and well, Iran is not going to take and uh, torpedo their own uh, invested interest there that helps their economy to grow by uh, targeting their own ships there, especially with the United States moving military assets in the region to start with. Uh, you get a little bit better view right here, burning tanker filmed by the Iran after attacks in the Gulf of Oman. I just showed you that video, but it's kind of a still photo there. You can see to give you a little bit better idea of what's going on there as well. I wanted to share with you guys uh, as just as a reminder what Vladimir Putin was saying here in this video here uh, we, we brought out day before yesterday. If we do not keep this fiery serpent under control, let's listen again what the, what the uh, president of Russia had to say there, talking about nuclear weapons that is. If we let it out of the bottle, God forbid, this could lead to a global catastrophe. Look, today everyone is addressing environmental issues. Uh, and they are right to do so because these are threats such as the climate change, uh, anthro, whatever, emissions and so on. Even children are engaged, girls and boys all over the world. But they do not realize these young people, especially teenagers and children, they are not aware of the global threat and serious challenge. 
and po uh, posed by possible global conflicts. This is something adult men and women should think about. However, I get the impression that these issues how, have somehow become uh, commonplace and have kind of been shifted to the background. This raises natural concerns. So you just can imagine after President Putin states these type of things here, uh, what's on his mind. He is certainly realizing that right now we are in danger of a major war. Uh, sitting there looking just on Twitter a moment ago as well, the United States moving yet another uh, ship into that region there. Let me just see if I could pull that back up uh, for you, just so you can kind of see this there. I thought I'd saved it, but I guess I did not. Um, uh, so at any rate there, we do have uh, USS Bainbridge have reported that they saw an, an unexploded limit mine on the side of one of the ships attacked Thursday in the Gulf of Oman, according to U.S. defense official. That's one of the reports coming out now. Uh, no wonder why they're trying to blame the Iranians for it. But uh, again, I, you know, from some of the sources I have, this was actually a torpedo that struck the ship. Could be a mine, though. I don't want to sit there and say for, for, for certain that this is the way it is. But uh, the, the major issue that we're dealing with right now is that uh, the Chinese uh, and the Iranians are exchanging technology, but the Chinese are exchanging technology with or sharing technology with Iran that is far beyond that of U.S. capability. So I do want to uh, stress that uh, that is really the, the, the main focus right now that I can see in this situation. Uh, the U.S., of course, we already have uh, aircraft carrier strike group in the region there. We have another ship that is en route as well. This is something that could certainly spiral completely out of control. Uh, and how bad it could get is anybody's guess but it is not looking good and i think this is something that we need to be aware of and of course if for some reason the united states and uh, iran end up going to blows over here in the middle east uh, that it would be a one massive war it would take because Iran is not a small country like Iraq. It is twice the size, if not bigger than that. Uh, they have far more of a sizable military, and that would really put our assets on the edge. And then thinking about this as well, the information being shared with me that the Chinese sharing a technology that is beyond U.S. capabilities uh, with the Iranians, you cannot help but wonder what kind of technology is that? And also with Iran recently saying that they could take and wipe out the entire U.S. fleet uh, with just one missile. And uh, of course, uh, my own Iranian source confirming uh, not that they have it, but he did confirm that he did not believe that that is a bluff that the Iranians no doubt have something or they wouldn't be brave enough to make that accusation there. So, and, and I have to tell you, friends, personally, I just hate to see any kind of war break out. Uh, Iran has not attacked any country in the last 200 years, and you would like to see peace prevail. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. Uh, there again, that's why I think in the case of Vladimir Putin and what he was saying here uh, on this broadcast here, the man is trying to see uh, peace prevail in the region. But it's obvious to him it's not going to prevail. And that's what we're watching for very carefully there. And that could quickly, if there is a strike on Iran, let me just say this so you're well aware of that. Uh, the Saudis will no doubt be involved. The United States would be involved. Israel would be involved. Uh, that would no doubt bring a counter strike by Russia. I have intelligence sources uh, from Israel that had said quite some time back, we have shared that with you guys on a, a, on a continual basis, uh, that if this goes down, uh, we could anticipate that Russia may uh, counter with a limited nuclear strike on the United States. Uh, and, of course, we would see Syria go down. We would see Damascus go down. And I, I can't remind you enough that God has said over and over through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 17, it's because we were not mindful of the rock and we have forgotten the God of our salvation. See, God never wanted Damascus to be taken down. All right? According to Isaiah 17. 
He tells us it goes down, but Damascus had become a fortress for Ephraim. Who is Ephraim in this case here? Ephraim represents the house of Israel that believed the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why we had the churches there. That's why Paul was going there to crush them. It's when he was a Pharisee, he wanted to go crush those believers drag them into prison and this is where we are today they're wanting to take once again a new world order is on the horizon and we're going to see that dominant pharisaic type of attitude uh, really come back into play in real life in modern times and when the whole world is engulfed in a war once the things begin to settle down that new world order will be able to be implemented and then you will see these new laws come out uh, and there's some things my wife's going to share as well in a broadcast later just about that biblical scriptures uh, and, and to make you think a little bit more about what's going on. But right now what we're looking at is the situation with China and Iran. China sharing technology beyond U.S. capabilities with Iran. Again, our breaking story today. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Erev Tov, in a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace.